Let's go to the park. Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Teague in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm on location at the park, as I like to do, so that I can show off the beautiful sights, the beautiful locations, and also the beautiful cars. My wife and I recently celebrated a new addition to our family. She bought a 2021 Highlander Limited and we couldn't enjoy it anymore. I wanna tell you about it, show you how to use the buttons and the controls and dials because for a lot of new owners, you'll wanna know this. So this is your, I'm researching for a Highlander and need to know if I like it or I just bought a Highlander and I wanna know more about it. I don't understand all the technology, the safety. I'm here to help. I'm sitting here at a light right now and I wanted to show you what the Apple CarPlay looks like when it's in full use and you can swipe sideways so you can look at some of the different apps that you can get on your phone. This car is so smooth. It's so comfortable and it's got good acceleration so that when you're stopping at a stop sign and you get going, you can do it with acceleration, with force, with confidence. You can go up a hill, you can merge onto a highway. No problem, folks. Got 99 problems, but Highlander ain't one. That's right. And we can also see we've got the dual digital temperature controls. You can see it on each knob. It's quite a nice system here. Place to store your snacks, your lens wipes place to plug in and run the cord down from underneath so that it's kind of out of the way. Pretty convenient. Let's go to the park. So here she is. This is a moon dust. Oh, it's a marvelous night for a moon dust. It's a great night for us because we've got a 2021 Highlander Limited front wheel drive in moon dust. All right. You can get it in front wheel drive or all wheel drive with the type of driving that we do. We didn't think all wheel drive was going to be necessary. It costs more, it lowers the MPG just a tick, but those factors contributed to us saying front wheel drive, FWD is just fine with us. And why would you buy a Highlander? For me, I wanted luxury, I wanted comfort. She's always wanted a Highlander. She had previously a 2016 RAV4 Limited. She's always wanted the Highlander and she deserves luxury. She's put up with me this long, so we thought that was the best thing to do. But you would get a Highlander if you want maybe three rows of seating, if you want seven or eight passenger capability, and you want to ride like few others in this class. It's smooth, it's quiet, it's comfortable. We've really enjoyed it over the past month. These may be reasons why you would choose Highlander. If you're researching a Highlander right now, you need to know this. If you already own one, you probably already know this, but ride comfort. This car is so smooth it really is, it's so quiet, it's so comfortable. When it accelerates, when it accelerates, you hear that engine, you do hear the roar of that 3.5 liter V6 engine, but I'll tell you, at cruising speeds, so dang comfortable. And the seats, they're very nice. Lumbar support, power driver seat, so I can raise my seat. Whoa, go Sparty. Can I lower it? That's one thing I really like about driving this car versus driving my Camry that I used to have. Now I've got a Venza, so I like that you sit up higher, but in this one right here, you sit up really high. I really appreciate that because now you're looking over a lot of the traffic. So you can see if traffic is bottled up ahead, you can see if construction is happening, if there's an accident, and you can see what's going on. So that way, if you've got a taller vehicle, you got a chance of staying in touch of what's going on. I need to know. Like I said, you can get this in front wheel drive or all wheel drive. This is the fourth generation Highlander. It just came out with a new body redesign, Toyota new global architecture design, and it's designed for increased visibility, technology, safety, ride comfort, performance. Speaking of performance, this has the 3.5 liter V6 engine. I'll show you that. Pop the hood right here. Three point five liter V six engine. It produces two hundred and ninety five horsepower, and it is matched with an eight speed automatic transmission. It has McPherson struts in the front, multi link rear suspension in the back. And why is that important? Well, multi link rear suspension. That's a big buzzword we've been hearing in the Toyota world and Toyota circles the past few years because. 
it's kind of a way to give you the best of everything, the best of both worlds, because it's smooth on the straightaways and it tightens up. It's really responsive, tight handling when you're going around corners. So you might need to do those evasive maneuvers, maybe if it's slick out or a deer gets in the way. You wanna know that you can be in control of your car and this is one way to do it. So that's important. I think that's what it means, but you can also get this engine right here. It can be a hybrid. So you can get better gas mileage where you can average 35 or 36 MPG. It's pretty incredible, but that's with a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine matched with electric motors. And together they give you 245 net hybrid horsepower. So which of those do you prefer? First glance, you might just look at this and say, that's a nice looking front end. That's what she said. But we're gonna peel those layers apart, okay? First layer, 8.0 inch ground clearance. That's on all Highlanders. And what that means is you have plenty of clearance to get over rocks and sticks and things like that if you need to. But I would be careful if you get up to a closer or taller curb or a light post or maybe the edge of your garage, just be careful as you get closer to it to learn how far is too far. Something that'll help you with that. We've got sensors right here in the front and sensors in the back. So as you get close to something, it's beep, 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 beep. I'm falling. Beep, 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 like that. It's got projector beam headlights, LED. It's got LED strip daytime running lights and then high input, high output, I'm sorry, high output LED lights here. And the benefits here are they project wider and taller and farther and they last longer than traditional lights. So I think you'll be happy with the performance, the life of it, and the low cost of ownership of these lights. And let's look a little bit closer because I do wanna just show you those parking sensors and the three-dimensional grill here. It's a gloss black. Glad there aren't a lot of bugs on this thing. It's got a chrome strip right here, which the Highlander is kind of known for, unless you go with the XSC model. But 3D, baby, what? This car is equipped with Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 plus. You'll see that on the Camry for 21, the Highlander or the CHR. It's got radar technology here, camera technology up there, and it's watching for cars and people and road signs so it can detect the speed limit and things like that. One of the new improvements on TSS 2.5 plus is intersection support. So let's say this car is waiting here and we've got a light right here. We're ready to turn left, okay, left, on a green light, but cars are coming. If we think the coast is clear, but there's somebody in the crosswalk, the car could alert you and tell you that there's somebody there and potentially stop also. So that will give you peace of mind in case there's a car there or a person or another car coming this way as you're getting ready to turn left. So that might really help you. It's the next evolution of Toyota Safety Sense. Look at this beautiful profile and look how the car looks so much taller than me. Yeah, I'm 5'8", but why is the car taller than me? Anyway, we've got smart key, push button start. It also means it's got auto lock and unlock. So if I have the key in my pants pocket, unlock it, and then we can lock it just like that. And if you notice, it's got turn signal indicators in the side mirror, along with blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert. You'll see that it has disc brakes. Well, you won't see, but it's got disc brakes in the front disc brakes in the back, and then the fuel mileage right here. It's a 17.9 gallon fuel tank. And then the fuel mileage for a front wheel drive is 21 in the city, 29 on the highway, combined of 24. It goes a little bit down for all wheel drive to 20, 27, and 23 combined for all wheel drive. And then, and then, and then it's got 20 inch alloy wheels. And then, um, and then it's got more 20 inch alloy wheels. And then, no and then, and then. Yeah, you know it's from Dude, Where's My Car? I know, because I've done that before. I love the movie. I love the reference. It's one of the funniest scenes of all time. Check it out, Ch -ch check it out. And you never know what you're gonna see on camera. This is a little baby guy here, or girl. We're gonna release it into the wild. Well, I'm not, I'm not the hero. Hey, little friend. I wanna go to the park, let me go. Safe travels, my friend. Highlander Limited comes with LED tail lights and LED stop lights, so they will come on a little bit quicker than traditional halogen bulbs, 
So that's a benefit to the people behind you. They know when you're stopping faster. It's got a backup camera here, along with, if you see, there's a square right here. That is a backup camera washer. It squirts fluid right down here to clean your backup camera. I'll show you how to do that on the steering wheel. That's how you do that one. It's got backup sensors right here. Okay. I'm not showing you my license plate. What am I, a dummy? Mama didn't raise no fool. So now we've got a couple different ways to lower this and raise this. We can use this right here. Just hold that down. Or there's a button up here. You can stop it along the way. I think I wanna have it exposed all the way to the top. In here, you can see one of two different configurations for the second row, a bench seat or captain's chairs. This one has the bench seat. That's what my wife wanted. She wanted to be able to fit three people across and we've already done that. Now, we took the middle headrest off. So this is a tip for you. If you've got only one or two people who are gonna be driving in this thing, you might as well just take off those headrests there so you can see better out the back. If you've got backseat passengers, different story. But look at this cargo space here. It's nice and flat. She chose to get the all-weather cargo tray here so that that way you can clean it out, you can spray it out once it gets dirty. It's really convenient that way. So let's put up the seats and I'll show you how that works. So this right here behind the third row, real easy, 16 cubic feet. It used to be in the last generation, 13.9. So they've given you more room behind the third row, but putting up the seats is pretty easy. You can do different angles for recline. Just pull the strap real easy. And then you can see also it's got the overhead latches for car seats in the back as well. And they're exposed through this cargo tray. So that's a nice benefit. Now we're going to put the second row seats down so you can see the room there. So you can see all this room here to store things, to lie down, to show off your Michigan State pride. I grew up around Lansing, Michigan, so always be a Sparty fan. What school do you represent? You got somebody you love? And this is what your car looks like from the back. And then you can see just different things. These are the squares that are cut out for your tonneau cover if you want one of those. It's got cup holders for people in the third row. It's also got strap downs, tie downs. Your JBL speakers in the back. I like it. Place for cargo net. Some things to note about the back seat space. I think there's a good amount of headroom here. I love the leg room. This is with the seat a little bit more forward, but not quite all the way back. It has a visor a sunshade so that you can block out the sun. It's great for kids because they can't do anything about it a lot of times. So now let's talk about these seats. This seat right here, it's a little bit firm. It's a little bit hard. It is. And then look at this. This is button number one, button number two or lever, and then lever number three. So what you do is to move the seat forward and backward, you want the one that's all the way forward. Watch how much slide room there is pretty good that's pretty strong okay now this one right here this is for the back of the seat can we climb like that because that's as straight as it goes and then this one right here this is what the middle one that's what folds it flat and what I mean by that is if you push it it's not gonna do anything you have to pull the lever up top here and then pull this down and that does that. Now, since it's a bench seat, we could also fold it and slide it, fold it and slide it so you can get to your third row. Remember when I said to take off the headrest? Because if you're looking out the back window, now you can see better as opposed to having that third headrest there. I think that's a good benefit if you don't have back seat passengers. The seat or that arm rest, the arm rest, it's squishy, it's a little bit firm, should be good. 
nice deep cup holders. And we got to see what else we got here. We got some bottle holders with separators. And then look at the trim, that faux wood trim. It's got a pocket and then a pocket. It's also got rear temperature controls and two USB ports and a grounded outlet back here so that you can plug in your game systems or whatever you want to plug in. Now look at the temperature, the vents for the heating and air conditioning. They're up top here and then they're along the sides and the back so that it blows down. But everybody gets access to a vent, which is real important for backseat folks. And I know why it's not done in a lot of videos, but a lot of times you can't see the third row of a Highlander because it's just so dang hard to film. So here we go. And then what I did was I created more legroom by moving that middle seat up. You could also take away a lot of legroom by putting the seat all the way back. And I'm gonna crawl in here. This is how an adult could climb in. Here I am in the back, I'm moving the headrest up and I've got good amount of leg room here. You can fit three smaller people across. I wouldn't say three large adults would fit here, but yeah, it's not bad back here at all really. It just has to be not a six foot five person. Here's what the interior looks like from the back seats. You can either get an eight inch screen for multimedia or you can get a 12.3 inch screen. We have the, I hate to even call it smaller because it's a really good size for in here, but it's the eight inch multimedia touchscreen. You'll have access to Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Amazon Alexa, Sirius XM, HD radio, so much more, my friends. And if you notice, this one has dynamic navigation. So it updates from the cloud in real time. This is gonna be our first introduction to buttons and controls and dials. Let's check out if we've got one touch windows or not. Push it once, goes down, goes up. Push that window one time, it goes down. It goes up. Here's how to tell if your car has window tinting on it. Right here, you can see there's a little bit of a gap. If there's a little bit of a gap, you've probably got window tinting. If it's light all the way up to the edge, you probably don't. If you wanna lock out all the windows, if you're rolling down your windows, you're hitting those buttons and it's not working, it's because you have them locked out. So this is the lockout button. You wanna make sure that's off, not on. If it's on, you can't open up those windows. It's got two seat memory. So you just push one and set and that'll set your one. So let's try this. Push number two, it's gonna return you to the position for person number two. And let's go to hit number one. It's gonna return you to the position that you were at for number one. And if you notice, the mirror is also adjusting according to the person which is pretty cool. You can put your hand sanitizer, your window cleaner, gloves, baggies. Great place to store all that. Got our Highlander plate. I can't show you it at night, but you do have a puddle lamp and it shines Highlander at nighttime. It's right here, okay, right there. And it displays Highlander right down in here when you open up the car. Wish I could show you that. I can't. All right, so we've got a leather wrap steering wheel. This one has a heated steering wheel as well, and it works pretty quick. This is for the power back door, automatic high beams, a little pocket, and then we've got our fuel door release. Push that, and it pops. When you get gasoline, make sure that you click it. If you don't click it, you might have the check engine light come on because there's not a tight seal and the car thinks there could potentially be a problem. Now, somebody reminded me when I did my last tutorial, I did not show how to brighten the dash and dim it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to dim it, dim, 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 dim. So we're gonna dim it and then we'll brighten it. 
sunshine day all the dash is brighter sunshine day and then you've got the trip a trip b total mileage and back again tag team back again it also tells you which seat belts you have undone and which doors you still have open there's our fuel mileage there it's a little bit lower because i've been driving it fast but that'll tell you what we're getting for an average and then you can see the display right here it also has this is to go across our multi-information display if you get a message like that that says hey you got a door open push this it'll return it to the previous screen but it'll come back don't worry that's how you pick up a phone call that's how you hang up a phone call this is how you give the car a voice command this is the volume now if you push it down beep like that it's gonna go blink and it'll be for the multi media display if you hold it down that's gonna be for Android Auto or, or Apple CarPlay so I'll just try this before you start consider viewing the event find nearby restaurants searching searching showing results for restaurants select the one you want say next page for more items we'll go to Chipotle to navigate to this point of interest starting guidance for a new route Holla. And then we push OK. The route guidance will start now. So I just want to delete two tenths of a mile. that destination as well. At the end of the road, on but I want to show you this. Road. And if I want to delete this destination, I just push X. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes. All right. We can do our home screen. And then if you want to have three different things, you can do that. But you can also go to menu setup, home screen, customize home screen. Do you want to change the layout? Which of these pieces of information do you want? Do you want four pieces, two pieces, three? This is my wife's car, so I'm not about to mess it up. Uh-uh, not going to happen, not today. And then we've got audio we've got am fm sirius xm you can push sound this is how to adjust your speakers treble mid bass i've got it on a three treble three mid uh, one bass make it two bass you can change it however you want but i think that's really good sound you can move all of the music to the front to the back or the left or the right however you want it we'll keep it right in the center and then automatic sound levelizer if it's on then the radio volume is going to raise as your engine accelerates as your car accelerates and your engine gets a little bit louder the radio will compensate you can do your preset stations there uh, station list options sound there's a lot you can do with it you can seek between your songs your music you can do apps you can do your phone i'm not going to do the phone right now map will go to dynamic navigation system and there you can push this and it can give you different ideas you can do a map mode do you want to do the map only compass do you want to do the freeway exit list what do you want point of interest icons could be uh, parking lots ATMs coffee houses there's a lot you can do look at all this feels like an Arby's night So there's a lot you can do with this right here. We'll do okay. All right, that's our dynamic navigation. The rest of the steering wheel controls, we've got cruise control, radar cruise control, lane departure alert, the mode, AM, FM, satellite radio and back, or your preset station. So if I wanna hit the cruise, if I wanna turn the cruise on, okay, it's active and then I'm gonna set it. If I wanna see the three bars up there, if I want it to be a conservative distance between me and the cars in front of me, I'll keep it at a three. Maybe I want it closer, two, maybe even more. Closer, closer, a one setting. You get to choose that. I would suggest starting it with a two and seeing what you think. This turns off the lane departure alert. 
or lane departure alert on. If you want lane tracing assist to work, that's what keeps you LTA, keeps you centered in your lane between the stripes or the solid lines, even around curves or following traffic. You have to have your cruise on in a speed set and you have to have your lane departure alert on. If I hit the lane departure alert off, then it says it's going to be turning it off. Okay, so that might give you some clues on how to at least start with that one. This is our backup camera. You can give us different orientations. You can have different pieces of grid lines. That's what my wife likes, so that's what we'll do there. And then you can also, your backup camera washer. So if I wanna wash the front, I pull those wipers toward me. If I wanna wash the back in the backup camera, I'm gonna push it forward. See that? It's clear, it's crystal clear, hallelujah. We've got push button start, and then if you wanna turn on your engine, you put your foot on the brake, and start it. If you want to put on just the accessories, take your foot off the brake and then hit it a couple times. Just like that. And if I want to start it, put my foot on the brake. Just like that. I've got this plugged in for Apple CarPlay, this plugged in to charge the passenger. I've got an air vent here. We got another USB, a place to store whatever you want. And then see the smart storage? Those are lens cleaners. Anyway, uh, you can take that little pop out, out and then you can run your wire down there. That way it kind of doesn't bunch up on you. Another place for storage. Here's your glove box, just like that. Fits the owner's manual plus a lot more. Storage here for our fluffer, our Swiffer. JBL speakers. This is an auto dimming rear view mirror with home link for your three garage door programmers. It auto dims at night. This is a sunglass holder, but it's also a little spy glass so that you can see the people behind you and they can see you. Those are the lights on. Now watch the interior lights. They're always on. Now their door, it's on the door setting. So if I open up the door, they all come on. And if I want them always off, I do that. Your moon roof, this is to open and close it. This is move it up and down, like to vent it. And then just kind of pop it open like this. And then safety connect, that's what alerts your call center if there's a problem. You have to open that up and then hit that just like that. And then we've got some lights, a slider so we can block out as much sun as possible. And that's on the driver's side too. Inside here, we've got our smart charging, and you can also store whatever you want to. We've got a lot stored in there, but your smart charger goes right on there. You just hit the light, put your charger on here, and then it'll start charging. Pretty easy. This right here, this A, this is for your engine start and stop. If I don't want that on, look at the top of your display. It's off, see that red line, or red symbol, A? Okay. It's off, or it's on, it's off. The system is on, the system is off. So it'll shut off at a traffic light so that you're not burning fuel. It's supposed to save about one mile per gallon. You'll have to be the judge of whether that works that way for you or not. This is a seven inch multi-information display and we just scroll through so we can see different pieces of information. I'll show you what's on here though. You'll probably find some of these important and some of these you won't care at all about. How far till we run out of gasoline? Important, I love the digital speed. This is our lane departure alert, compass, lane tracing assist, radar cruise control. This tells us what song we have on. Our safety settings. Tells us our tire pressures. Now settings, this is for our lane departure alert. Let's hold that down. We can do lane centering, sensitivity, sway warning, sway sensitivity. My wife does not like the lane departure alert. She doesn't like when it buzzes. Me, I don't mind it at all. So I like having it on. Pre-collision system. And then this one right here, curve speed reduction. 
It will reduce your speed on curves. Do you want to do that? That's a good safety feature. Blind spot monitor off and on. Lights up right here. That's good because that's where you're looking to see if there's somebody there. Parking sensors. Do you want them off or do you want them on? We want all this stuff on. Rear cross traffic alert is off. Now it's on. Rear cross traffic braking. It's supposed to stop you if you get close to anything. I just don't want to try it. This detects your road sign assist. It detects speed limit signs, do not enter signs, stop signs, yield signs. And then we can hold this down, power back door, engine start and stop, tire pressure warning system, the rear seat reminder, maintenance. Rear seat reminder tells you if you might have left your belongings in the back seat or a dog or a child. Yank. Do we want the language, units, digital speed? Okay, do we want to turn off this display? I like having it on, so I'm not even gonna to touch it. All right, those are the things that you can do there. And also, this right here, it says I do not have on the driver's seatbelt. So there's a little warning sign. I know what I'm doing, I'm not going anywhere. I don't drive like that. Snow mode, in the snow, this gives you more traction. If you push it, it'll say snow mode. This turns off your traction control. The only reason you would want to have it off really is if maybe you're stuck in a snowbank and you want to rock your car back and forth. The car is designed to have the traction control on so you're not rocking and sliding. Or if you want to do donuts in a parking lot, you can try it. Even though this is front wheel drive, give it a shot. Why not? Driving mode. Eco gives us better gas mileage, especially in the city. I suggest this. Normal is normal drive normal gas mileage, sport, rapid acceleration. It'll get you out into traffic faster, get up a hill quicker, maybe to highway cruising speed faster. I like eco mode. And then this one right here, electronic parking brake. When you put it in reverse or drive, it'll go off. Now park, it's gonna come on. Got it? Brake hold. The only way brake hold works is if you're Door is shut on the driver's side and your seatbelt is clipped. Listen for the clip. Click it or tick it, boys. All right, so we're gonna turn this on. And then when I'm at a traffic light, I'm gonna pretend I'm at a traffic light right now. See, I'm stopped. When you stop, the other light will come on. There'll be a green and a yellow light on. So for three minutes, about three minutes, it's going to hold you in place so that you can stretch out your legs at a light but you have to have your seatbelt clipped, you have to have your driver's door shut, and you have to push this button every single time you start the car because it's not automatically going to go to the default where it's on. It will be off, and if it's off, you don't want to think that it's on, and then you're going to run into the car in front of you at a light. Don't say Jeff told you that, because he didn't. Hello. Thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. This is really good for people. Again, if you've just bought your Highlander, congratulations. I hope this helps you learn at least one new button, new control, safety system or technology, because there's a lot of it and it's overwhelming. Remember, you don't have to know it all at once, just a little bit at a time. Or if you're researching, maybe this will help convince you that a Highlander might be a perfect choice for you. It's smooth, it's quiet, it's comfortable. It's really good sizing for most families. I recommend that you test drive it at your local dealership. I think you'll really like it. But thanks again. Please hit like. I've done a long video. Please help me out with a like. Just hit like. Hit subscribe if you want to know more about what I do. I've got almost 800 videos, how-to videos, review videos, comparison videos, buttons, controls, and dials videos. There's a lot going on. And we're going to be doing and exploring more and more about how to purchase a new car and how to learn more about your cars as we go into 2021. So I think you're gonna like that series a lot. It could help you save some when you're purchasing a car, some hassle, some money, some peace of mind, all that kind of stuff. Follow me on Instagram at Toyota Jeff one Follow me on Facebook at Toyota Jeff. You can check out my website, toyotajeff.com, and I'll see you guys next time.